Indo-Scythians is a term used to refer to Scythians who migrated into parts of central, northern and western South Asia Sogdiana, Bactria, Arachosia, Gandhara, Sindh, Kashmir, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Maharashtra from the middle of the 2nd century BC to the 4th century AD. The first Sakha king in South Asia was Maui's, Moga 1st century BC who established Sakha power in Gandhara, and Indus Valley. The Indo-Scythians extended their supremacy over northwestern India, conquering the Indo-Greeks and other local kingdoms. The Indo-Scythians were apparently subjugated by the Kushan Empire, by either Kujula Kadphises or Kanishka. Yet the Sakha continued to govern as satrapies, forming the northern satraps and western satraps. The power of the Sakha rulers started to decline in the 2nd century CE after the Indo-Scythians were defeated by the Satavahana emperor Gotamiputra Satakarni. Indo-Scythian rule in the northwestern Indian subcontinent ceased when the last western satrap Rudrasimha III was defeated by the Gupta emperor Chandragupta II in 395 CE. The invasion of northern regions of the Indian subcontinent by Scythian tribes from Central Asia, often referred to as the Indo-Scythian invasion, played a significant part in the history of the Indian subcontinent as well as nearby countries. In fact, the Indo-Scythian War is just one chapter in the events triggered by the nomadic flight of Central Asians from conflict with tribes such as the Xiongnu in the 2nd century AD, which had lasting effects on Bactria, Kabul, and the Indian subcontinent as well as far off Rome in the west, and more nearby to the west in Parthia. Ancient Roman historians including Arian and Claudius Ptolemy have mentioned that the ancient Saccas were nomadic people. However, Italo Ronca, in his detailed study of Ptolemy chapter V, states, "...the land of the Sakai belongs to nomads, they have no towns but dwell in forests and caves." As spurious. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origins The ancestors of the Indo-Scythians are thought to be Sakas tribes. One group of Indo-European speakers that makes an early appearance on the Xinjiang stage is the Sakha ch. Sai. Sakha is more a generic term than a name for a specific state or ethnic group. Sakha tribes were part of a cultural continuum of early nomads across Siberia and the central Eurasian steppe lands from Xinjiang to the Black Sea. Like the Scythians whom Herodotus describes in Book IV of his history Sakha is an Iranian word equivalent to the Greek Scythes, and many scholars refer to them together as Sakha Scythian. Sakas were Iranian-speaking horse nomads who deployed chariots in battle, sacrificed horses, and buried their dead in barrows or mound tombs called kurgans. According to their own origin myths, they claimed descent from Kushtana Maurya, the exiled son of the Indian emperor Ashokavardhana Maurya who established the kingdom of Khotan at Tarim Basin. <laughs> UG expansion In the 2nd century BC, a fresh nomadic movement started among the Central Asian tribes, producing lasting effects on the history of Rome in Europe, Parthia in Western Asia, and Bactria, Kabul, and India in the East in Southern Asia. Recorded in the annals of the Han dynasty and other Chinese records, this great tribal movement began after the Yuji tribe was defeated by the Xiongnu, fleeing westwards after their defeat and creating a domino effect as they displaced other Central Asian tribes in their path. According to these ancient sources Modu Shanu of the Xiongnu tribe of Mongolia attacked the Yuji possibly related to the Tocharians who lived in eastern Tarim Basin area and evicted them from their homeland between the Kilian Shan and Dunhuang around 175 BC. Leaving behind a remnant of their number, most of the population moved westwards into the Ili River area. There, they displaced the Sakas, who migrated south into Fergana and Sogdiana. According to the Chinese historical chronicles who call the Sakas, Sai. Sai. The Yuji attacked the king of the Sai who moved a considerable distance to the south and the Yuji then occupied his lands. Sometime after 155 BC, the Yuji were again defeated by an alliance of the Wusun and the Xiongnu, and were forced to move south, again displacing the Scythians, who migrated south towards Bactria and present Afghanistan, and southwest closer towards Parthia. The Sakas seem to have entered the territory of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom around 145 BC, where they burnt to the ground the Greek city of Alexandria on the Oxus. 
The Uji remained in Sogdiana on the northern bank of the Oxus, but they became suzerains of the Sakas in Bactrian territory, as described by the Chinese ambassador Zhang Qian, who visited the region around 126 BC in Parthia. Between 138 124 BC, a tribe known to ancient Greek scholars as the Sakaroke, probably from the old Persian Sakaravaka, nomadic Saka. And an allied, possibly non Saka, Scythian people, the Masajte came into conflict with the Parthian Empire. The Sakaroke Masajte alliance won several battles and killed, in succession, the Parthian kings Phraates II and Artabanus I. The Parthian king Mithridates II finally retook control of parts of Central Asia, first by defeating the Uji in Sogdiana in 115 BC, and then defeating the Scythians in Parthia and Sistan around 100 BC. After their defeat, the Uji tribes migrated relatively far to the east into Bactria, which they were to control for several centuries, and from which they later conquered northern India to found the Kushan Empire. Settlement in Sakastan The Sakas settled in Drangiana, an area of southern Afghanistan, western Pakistan and south Iran, which was then called after them as Sakastan or Sistan. From there, they progressively expanded into present-day Iran as well as northern India, where they established various kingdoms, and where they are known as Sakha. The Arsacid Emperor Mithridates II c. BCE had scored many successes against the Scythians and added many provinces to the Parthian Empire, and apparently the Scythian hordes that came from Bactria were also conquered by him. A section of these people moved from Bactria to Lake Helmand in the wake of Ukai pressure and settled about Drangiana Sigil, a region which later came to be called Sakastana of the Scythian Scythian Sakai. Towards the end of 1st century BC. The region is still known as Sistan. The presence of the Sakas in Sakastan in the 1st century BC is mentioned by Isidore of Carrix in his Parthian Stations. He explained that they were bordered at that time by Greek cities to the east Alexandria of the Caucasus and Alexandria of the Arachosians, and the Parthian controlled territory of Arachosia to the south. Beyond is Sakastana of the Scythian Sakai, which is also Paraetasena, 63 Shoni. There are the city of Barda and the city of Min and the city of Palacenti and the city of Sigil, in that place is the royal residence of the Sakai, and nearby is the city of Alexandria, Alexandria Arachosia, and six villages. Parthian Stations, 18. Indo-Scythian kingdoms Iberia to Sarastrine The first Indo-Scythian kingdom was located in northwest India in the areas from Iberia eastern Sindh and Gujarat to Sarastrine from around 110 to 80 BC. They moved progressively further north into Indo-Greek territory until the conquests of Maui's, c. 80 BC The 1st century AD Periplus of the Erythraean Sea describes the Scythian territories there. Beyond this region Gadrosia, the continent making a wide curve from the east across the depths of the bays, there follows the coast district of Scythia, which lies above toward the north, the whole marshy, from which flows down the river Synthus, the greatest of all the rivers that flow into the Erythraean Sea, bringing down an enormous volume of water. This river has seven mouths, very shallow and marshy, so that they are not navigable, except the one in the middle, at which by the shore, is the market town, Barbaricum. Before it there lies a small island, and inland behind it is the metropolis of Scythia, Minagara. It is subject to Parthian princes who are constantly driving each other out. The Indo-Scythians ultimately established a kingdom in the northwest, based near Taxila, with two great satraps, one in Mathura in the east, and one in Sarastrine Gujarat in the southwest. In the southeast, the Indo-Scythians invaded the area of Ujjain, but were subsequently repelled in 57 BC by the Malwa king Vikramaditya. To commemorate the event Vikramaditya established the Vikrama era, a specific Indian calendar starting in 57 BC. More than a century later, in AD 78, the Sakas would again invade Ujjain and establish the Saka era, marking the beginning of the long-lived Saka Western Satraps Kingdom. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Gandhara and Punjab. The presence of the Scythians in northwestern India during the 1st century BCE was contemporary with that of the Indo-Greek kingdoms there, and it seems they initially recognized the power of the local Greek rulers. Maui's first conquered Gandhara and Taxila around 80 BCE, but his kingdom disintegrated after his death. In the east, the Indian king Vikrama retook Ujjain from the Indo-Scythians, celebrating his victory by the creation of the Vikrama era starting 58 BCE. Indo-Greek kings again ruled after Maui's, and prospered, as indicated by the profusion of coins from kings Apollodotus II and Hippostratos. Not until Aziz I, in 55 BC, did the Indo-Scythians take final control of northwestern India, with his victory over Hippostratos. <laughs> Sculpture Several stone sculptures have been found in the early Saka layer, layer number four, corresponding to the period of Aziz I, in which numerous coins of the latter were found in the ruins of Sirkap, during the excavations organized by John Marshall. Several of them are toilet trays also called stone pallets roughly imitative of earlier, and finer, Hellenistic ones found in the earlier layers. Marshall comments that we have a praiseworthy effort to copy a Hellenistic original but obviously without the appreciation of form and skill which were necessary for the task." From the same layer, several statuettes in the round are also known, in very rigid and frontal style. <laughs> Bamaran casket Aziz is connected to the Bamaran casket, one of the earliest representations of the Buddha. The casket was used for the dedication of a stupa in Bamaran, near Jalalabad in Afghanistan, and placed inside the stupa with several coins of Aziz. This event may have happened during the reign of Aziz 60 BCE, or slightly later. The Indo-Scythians are otherwise connected with Buddhism see Matura Lion capital, and it is indeed possible they would have commended the work. Topic: Mathura area, northern satraps. In northern India, the Indo-Scythians conquered the area of Mathura over Indian kings around 60 BCE. Some of their satraps were Hagamasha and Hagana, who were in turn followed by the Saka great satrap Rajuvula. The Mathura Lion Capital, an Indo-Scythian sandstone capital in crude style, from Mathura in northern India, and dated to the 1st century CE, describes in Karushthi the gift of a stupa with a relic of the Buddha, by Queen Nadasa Kassa, the wife of the Indo-Scythian ruler of Mathura, Rajuvula. The capital also mentions the genealogy of several Indo-Scythian satraps of Mathura. Rajuvula apparently eliminated the last of the Indo-Greek kings Strato II around 10 CE, and took his capital city, Sagala. The coinage of the period, such as that of Rajuvula, tends to become very crude and barbarized in style. It is also very much debased, the silver content becoming lower and lower, in exchange for a higher proportion of bronze, an alloying technique billin, suggesting less than wealthy finances. The Mathura Lion capital inscriptions attest that Mathura fell under the control of the Sakas. The inscriptions contain references to Karahosts and Queen Iasia, the chief queen of the Indo Scythian ruler of Mathura, Satrap Rajuvula. Karahosts was the son of Arda, as is attested by his own coins. Arda is stated to be brother of King Moga or Mauis. The Indo Scythian satraps of Mathura are sometimes called the Northern Satraps, in opposition to the Western satraps, ruling in Gujarat and Malwa. After Rajuvula, several successors are known to have ruled as vassals to the Kushans, such as the Great Satrap, Karapalana, and the Satrap, Vanaspara, who are known from an inscription discovered in Sarnath, and dated to the third year of Kanishka, c. AD 130, in which they were paying allegiance to the Kushans. Pataliputra The text of the Yuga Purana describes an invasion of Pataliputra by the Scythians sometimes during the 1st century BC, after seven great kings had ruled in succession in Sakita following the retreat of the Yavanas. 
The Yuga Purana explains that the king of the Sakas killed one fourth of the population, before he was himself slain by the Kalinga king Shatta and a group of Sabalas. Sabaras or Bilas. Kushan and Indo Parthian conquests After the death of Aziz, the rule of the Indo Scythians in northwestern India was shattered with the rise of the Indo Parthian ruler Gondafares in the last years of the 1st century BC. For the following decades, a number of minor Scythian leaders maintained themselves in local strongholds on the fringes of the loosely assembled Indo Parthian Empire, some of them paying formal allegiance to Gondafares I and his successors. During the latter part of the 1st century AD, the Indo-Parthian overlordship was gradually replaced with that of the Kushans, one of the five tribes of the Uji who had lived in Bactria for more than a century, and were now expanding into India to create a Kushan empire. The Kushans ultimately regained northwestern India from around AD 75, and the area of Mathura from around AD 100, where they were to prosper for several centuries. Western Shatrapa's legacy Indo-Scythians continued to hold the area of Sistan until the reign of Bahram II AD 276-293, and held several areas of India well into the first millennium. Kathiawar and Gujarat were under their rule until the 5th century under the designation of Western Shatrapas, until they were eventually conquered by the Gupta Emperor Chandragupta II also called Vikramaditya. Indo-Scythian coinage Indo-Scythian coinage is generally of a high artistic quality, although it clearly deteriorates towards the disintegration of Indo-Scythian rule around AD 20 coins of Rajuvula. A fairly high quality but rather stereotypical coinage would continue in the Western satraps until the 4th century. Indo-Scythian coinage is generally quite realistic, artistically somewhere between Indo-Greek and Kushan coinage. It is often suggested Indo-Scythian coinage benefited from the help of Greek salators Indo-Scythian coins essentially continue the Indo-Greek tradition, by using the Greek language on the obverse and the Karushthi language on the reverse. The portrait of the king is never shown however, and is replaced by depictions of the king on horse and sometimes on camel, or sometimes sitting cross-legged on a cushion. The reverse of their coins typically show Greek divinities. Buddhist symbolism is present throughout Indo-Scythian coinage. In particular, they adopted the Indo-Greek practice since Menander I of showing divinities forming the Vitarka mudra with their right hand as for the mudra forming Zeus on the coins of Maui's or Aziz II, or the presence of the Buddhist lion on the coins of the same two kings, or the Triratana symbol on the coins of Zionizes. <laughs> Depiction of Indo-Scythians Besides coinage, few works of art are known to indisputably represent Indo-Scythians. Indo-Scythian rulers are usually depicted on horseback in armor, but the coins of Azalizes show the king in a simple, undecorated, tunic. Several Gandharan sculptures also show foreigners in soft tunics, sometimes wearing the typical Scythian cap. They stand in contrast to representations of Kushan men, who seem to wear thick, rigid, tunics, and who are generally represented in a much more simplistic manner. Bunner reliefs Indo-Scythian soldiers in military attire are sometimes represented in Buddhist friezes in the art of Gandhara particularly in Bunner reliefs. They are depicted in ample tunics with trousers, and have heavy straight swords as weapons. They wear pointed hoods the Scythian cap or bashlik, which distinguishes them from the Indo-Parthians who only wore a simple fillet over their bushy hair, and which is also systematically worn by Indo-Scythian rulers on their coins. With the right hand, some of them are forming the Karana mudra against evil spirits. In Gandhara, such friezes were used as decorations on the pedestals of Buddhist stupas. They are contemporary with other friezes representing people in purely Greek attire, hinting at an intermixing of Indo-Scythians holding military power and Indo-Greeks confined, under Indo-Scythian rule, to civilian life. 
Another relief is known where the same type of soldiers are playing musical instruments and dancing, activities which are widely represented elsewhere in Gandharan art. Indo Scythians are typically shown as reveling devotees. Stone palettes Numerous stone palettes found in Gandhara are considered good representatives of Indo-Scythian art. These palettes combine Greek and Iranian influences, and are often realized in a simple, archaic style. Stone palettes have only been found in archaeological layers corresponding to Indo-Greek, Indo-Scythian and Indo-Parthian rule, and are essentially unknown in the preceding Mauryan layers or the succeeding Kushan layers. Very often these palettes represent people in Greek dress in mythological scenes, a few in Parthian dress headbands over bushy hair, crossed over jacket on a bare chest, jewelry, belt, baggy trousers, and even fewer in Indo-Scythian dress Phrygian hat, tunic and comparatively straight trousers. A palette found in Sir Cap and now in the New Delhi Museum shows a winged Indo-Scythian horseman riding winged deer, and being attacked by a lion. The Indo-Scythians and Buddhism The Indo-Scythians seem to have been followers of Buddhism, and many of their practices apparently continued those of the Indo-Greeks. Topic. Royal dedications Several Indo-Scythian kings after Aziz are known for making Buddhist dedications in their name, on plaques or reliquaries Patika Kusulaka 25 BCE to 10 CE related his donation of a relic of the Buddha Shakyamuni to a Buddhist monastery, in the Taxila copper plate. Karahosts 10 BCE to 10 CE is mentioned on the Buddhist Mathura lion capital and on a reliquary. His coins were also found in the Bamaran casket, a beautiful Buddhist gold reliquary with an early image of the Buddha, now in the British Museum. Some of his coins bear the Buddhist Triratna symbol. Vijayamitra ruled 12 BCE to 15 CE personally dedicated in his name a Buddhist reliquary. Some of his coins bear the Buddhist Triratna symbol. Indraverman, while still a prince, personally dedicated in 5 to 6 CE a Buddhist reliquary, the Bajor casket, now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Ziyanizes and Aspavarma also used the Buddhist Triratna symbol on their coins. Rajula erected the Mathura Lion capital, which incorporates Buddhist symbols and relates the donations by his wife of relics to a stupa. Topic. Butkara Stupa Excavations at the Butkara Stupa in Swat by an Italian archaeological team have yielded various Buddhist sculptures thought to belong to the Indo Scythian period. In particular, an Indo Corinthian capital representing a Buddhist devotee within foliage has been found, which had a reliquary and coins of Aziz buried at its base, securely dating the sculpture to around 20 BC. A contemporary pilaster with the image of a Buddhist devotee in Greek dress has also been found at the same spot, again suggesting a mingling of the two populations. Various reliefs at the same location show Indo-Scythians with their characteristic tunics and pointed hoods within a Buddhist context, and side by side with reliefs of standing Buddhas. Gandharan sculptures Other reliefs have been found, which show Indo-Scythian men with their characteristic pointed cap pushing a cart on which is reclining the Greek god Dionysus with his consort Ariadne. <laughs> Mathura Lion Capital The Mathura Lion Capital, which associates many of the Indo-Scythian rulers from Maui's to Rajuvula, mentions a dedication of a relic of the Buddha in a stupa. It also bears centrally the Buddhist symbol of the Triratana, and is also filled with mentions of the Bhagavat Buddha Sakamuni, and characteristically Buddhist phrases such as Sarvabuddhana Puya Damasa Puya Sagasa Puya Revere all the Buddhas, revere the Dharma, revere the Sangha Mathura Lion Capital, Inscription 01, 02 Indo-Scythians in Western sources 
The country of Scythia in the area of Pakistan, and especially around the mouth of the Indus with its capital at Minagara modern-day Karachi is mentioned extensively in Western maps and travel descriptions of the period. The Ptolemy world map, as well as the Periplus of the Erythraean Sea mention prominently, the country of Scythia on the Indus Valley, as well as Roman tabula Putingeriana. The Periplus states that Minagara was the capital of Scythia, and that Parthian princes from within it were fighting for its control during the 1st century AD. It also distinguishes Scythia with Ariaka further east centered in Gujarat and Malwa, over which ruled the western satrap king Nahapana. <laughs> Indo-Scythians in Indian literature The Indo-Scythians were named Shaka in India, an extension on the name Saka used by the Persians to designate Scythians. From the time of the Mahabharata Wars 3100 BC roughly, prior to Kayuga start, Shakas received numerous mentions in texts like the Puranas, the Manumriti, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Mahabhasya of Patanjali, the Burhat Samhita of Vraha Mahira, the Kavyamimamsa, the Brihat Katha Manjari, the Katha Saritsagra and several other old texts. They are described as part of an amalgam of other warlike tribes from the northwest. Topic: <inaudible> Sai Wang Scythian hordes of Chipan or Kippen. A section of the Central Asian Scythians under Sai Wang is said to have taken southerly direction and after passing through the Pamirs it entered the Chipan or Kippen after crossing the Hasuna II hanging pass located above the valley of Kanda in Swat country. Chipan has been identified by Peliot, Bagchi, Raychaudhuri and some others with Kashmir while other scholars identify it with Kapisha The Sai Wang had established his kingdom in Kippen. S. Konau interprets the Sai Wang as Saka Marunda of Indian literature, Marunda being equal to Wang i.e. king, master or lord, but Bagchi who takes the word Wang in the sense of the king of the Scythians but he distinguishes the Sai Sakas from the Marunda Sakas. There are reasons to believe that Sai Scythians were Cambodia Scythians and therefore Sai Wang belonged to the Scythianized Camboyas i.e. Parama Camboyas of the Transoxiana region and came back to settle among his own stock after being evicted from his ancestral land located in Scythia or Shakadvipa. King Moga or Mauis could have belonged to this group of Scythians who had migrated from the Sai country Central Asia to Chipan. Establishment of Malechcha kingdoms in northern India The mixed Scythian hordes that migrated to Drangiana and surrounding regions later spread further into north and southwest India via the lower Indus Valley. Their migration spread into Sovira, Gujarat, Rajasthan and northern India, including kingdoms in the Indian mainland. There are important references to the warring Malecha hordes of the Sakas, Yavanas, Kamboyas and Pallavas in the Bala Kanda of the Valmiki Ramayana. H. C. Raychaudhuri glimpses in these verses the struggles between the Hindus and the invading hordes of Malechcha barbarians from the northwest. The time frame for these struggles is the 2nd century BC onwards. Raychaudhuri fixes the date of the present version of the Valmiki Ramayana around or after the 2nd century AD. Mahabharata too furnishes a veiled hint about the invasion of the mixed hordes from the northwest. Vanaparava by Mahabharata contains verses in the form of prophecy deploring that. The Malecha barbaric kings of the Shakas, Yavanas, Kamboyas, Balakas, etc. shall rule the earth .e. India unrighteously in Kaliyuga. According to H. C. Ray Chaudhary, this is too clear a statement to be ignored or explained away. <inaudible> <inaudible> Evidence about joint invasions The Scythian groups that invaded India and set up various kingdoms included, besides the Sakas, other allied tribes, such as the Medi, Xanthi, and Masajte. These peoples were all absorbed into the community of Kshatriyas of mainstream Indian society. The Shakas were formerly a people of the Trans Hemodos region the Shakadvipa of the Puranas or the Scythia of the classical writings. Isidore of Carrix beginning of 1st century AD attests them in Sakastana. Modern Sistan. The Periplus of the Erythraean Sea c. AD 70 80 also attests a Scythian district in Lower Indus with Minagra as its capital. Ptolemy c. 
AD 140 also attests to an Indo-Scythia in southwestern India which comprised the Patalene and Saurastrian territories. The 2nd century BC Scythian invasion of India, was in all probability carried out jointly by the Sakas, Pallavas, Kamboyas, Paratas, Rishikas and other allied tribes from the northwest. Main Indo-Scythian rulers Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Eastern Pakistan Maui's, c. 85–60 BC Vonwans, c. 75–65 BC Spalahors, c. 75 to 65 BC, satrap and brother of King Vonwans, and probably the later King Spalarises. Spalarises, c. 60 to 57 BC, king and brother of King Vonwans. Spalagadames, c. 50 BC, satrap and son of Spalahors. Azalises, before 60 BC. As is the first, c. 60 to 20 BC. Zionises, c. 10 BC, AD 10 Karahosts, c. 10 BC, AD 10 Hajatria Kashaharadas Punjab, Pakistan and beyond Liaka Kusaluka, satrap of Chuksa Kusulaka Patika, satrap of Chuksa and son of Liaka Kusulaka Bumaka Nahapana, founder of the Western Satraps. Topic: Aprakas Bajor, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan. Vijayamitra, 12 BC, AD 15, wife Rukana. Indravasu, c. AD 20, wife Vasumitra. Vispavarman, wife Sasirena. Indravarman, wife Udara. ASPA AD 15 to 45 or Aspavarma AD 15 to 45 Sasan Topic Paratas Baluchistan Pakistan Yolamira son of Bagareva C 125 to 150 Bagamira son of Yolamira C 150 Arjuna, a second son of Yolamira, c. 150-160. Varamira, a third son of Yolamira, c. 160-175. Miravara, son of Varamira, c. 175-185. Maratakma, another son of Varamira, c. 185-200. Kozana, son of Bagavarna, and perhaps grandson of Bagamira, c. 200 to 220 Bimarjuna, son of Yolatakma and perhaps grandson of Arjuna, c. 220 to 235 Kozia, son of Kozana, c. 235 to 265 Datarvarna, son of Dadayola I, possible grandson of Bimarjuna, c. 265 to 280 Dadayola II, son of Datarvarna, c. 280 to 300 Topic: Northern Satraps, Mathura area. Hagamasha, satrap, first century BC. Hagana, satrap, first century BC. Rajuvula, c. A.D. 10, great satrap. Sodasa, son of Rajuvula, great satrap. Karapalana, c. A.D. 130, satrap. Vanaspara C. AD 130. <inaudible> Minor local rulers Badayasa Mamvadi Arsakes <inaudible> Western satraps Nahapana 119 to 124 Chastana C 120 son of GHSA Matika Jayadaman son of Chastana 
Rudradaman I c. 130–150, son of Jayadaman Damahadasri I (170–175), Javadaman (175 died 199), Rudrasimha I (175–188 died 197), Isvaradatta (188–191), Rudrasimha I (restored) Javadaman restored 197 to 199 Rudrasena the 1st 200 to 222 Samgadaman 222 to 223 Damasena 223 to 232 Damahadasri the 2nd 232 to 239 with Varadaman 234 to 238 Yasodaman the 1st 239 Vijayasena 239 to 250 Damahadasri the 3rd 251 to 255 Rudrasena the 2nd 255 to 277 Visvasimha 277 to 282 Bhritadarman 282 to 295 with Visvasena 293 to 304 Rudrasimha the second, son of Lord Swami Javadaman, three hundred four to three hundred forty eight, with Yasodaman the second, three hundred seventeen to three hundred thirty two, Rudradaman the second, three hundred thirty two to three hundred forty eight, Rudrasena the third, three hundred forty eight to three hundred eighty, Simasena, three hundred eighty, Rudrasena the fourth, three hundred eighty two to three hundred eighty eight. Rudrasimha the third, three hundred eighty eight to three hundred ninety five. Topic Military actions. Topic Descendants of the Indo Scythians. Tadeusz Sulamurski notes that the Sakai also invaded parts of northern India. Weir Rajendra Rishi, an Indian linguist has identified linguistic affinities between Indian and Central Asian languages, which further lends credence to the possibility of historical Sakai influence in northern India. See also Ancient India and Central Asia Tilya Tepa Notes <laughs>